All right, good morning, everybody. I'm gonna do something a little fun. It's gonna be a crispy potato waffle. So what is that you say? Well, we're gonna start with potatoes. I got three large russet potatoes, or sometimes Idaho potatoes as they're known. I'm gonna drain these out. I have three, obviously, peeled them and just soaked them out. And then now I'm gonna start grating these first, uh, just to get that going, because it takes a little bit of time. Now, if you've got a food processor, that can work very well. And I'm going on a large hole like that and really just putting this into the bowl. And while we're doing that, I'm also gonna get the other ingredients ready. So I'll, I'll pause that and then we'll finish that up in a second. And then while that's going, and while I finish that up, I'm gonna melt some butter too. So four tablespoons, half a stick, unsalted. Um, if you have salted, go ahead and use that and just eliminate the salt or some of it at least. But for my recipe, if you're gonna use it, I'm gonna do that. And basically what we're just gonna do is melt that now and then let that cool. So that's gonna go in part of it. So I'm gonna start that up, just like that over low heat, and continue to grate my potato. Now I also have the waffle iron here, and I preheated it, because once we get this going, we're going to go right in there, and so you need it to be hot. And I'm gonna to continue to do that, and make sure to be careful of your fingers and your knuckles so you don't uh, get a little bit of a skin in there. So we're gonna to try to be careful. So you might lose little pieces here and there, and that's okay. And we're just gonna eliminate those here and then try to get those in a second. So three potatoes will probably be a little bit over a pound uh, in terms of weight, um, peel, not pre, but post peel, uh, will be about a pound and maybe a little bit more than that. So and we're gonna also have to uh, squeeze these out to eliminate the water. Okay, so I'm gonna drain these potatoes out, colander, and we'll see how much liquid there is. Just kind of, not a whole lot, so there's some in there. It just helps us so when you're getting things crispy, like I talked about earlier, you just don't want the water in there. So we're gonna do that and just give it a good ring out with your hands. It's not gonna be perfect, but we're gonna get as much water out as possible. And then we're gonna put that back in the bowl. Like this. Just like that. And we're gonna work fairly quickly because it's gonna start to color, meaning the potatoes, because they're oxid you know, starting to oxidize a little bit. Let me show that. So I've got the butter and that's melted out, just about. We'll let that sit here. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of eggs. I'm just gonna crack them and just blend them up a little bit. So it makes it easier to incorporate. That's gonna be the binder for this. Okay, so the two eggs here, just give them a quick whisk, just like that. I'll put them in here, and sit right into the potato mixture. So we're just gonna put everything into there. And then I've got the melted butter too. Just like that, the half a stick. Get all that out with your rubber spatula, one of my favorite tools. And I'm gonna get that quick, quick blend right there. And then we're gonna add some seasoning and some Parmesan cheese. So let me just blend that together just to help stop that oxidation a little bit because there's some liquid going into there. And that's just like that. Now, what I have is some salt. So for that, probably about a teaspoon, just like that, of salt. Go right in there. And then I've got some <clears throat> granulated garlic. And we'll just do a little bit, just like a quarter of a teaspoon. Adds a little bit of flavor, just like that. I like the dry. And then some cracked black pepper that I have here. Same thing, about a quarter of a teaspoon. Let's go a little bit more, a little, let's half a teaspoon right there. And then I'm gonna grab the grater again and I'm gonna do this Parmesan cheese and put that in there. Well, Reggiano, or you can use uh, grana. And so we're gonna put some in there. It gives a nice cheesy flavor. Now with this too, you can add green onions, you can add spinach. With spinach, uh, I would saute it first, drain some of the water as well, and put that in there. And so we got some of this Parmesan cheese that helps it melt nicely and kind of, you know, with the, the Frico or those uh, Parmesan chips, it's kind of helps to kind of crisp up a little bit too, which is kind of nice. But it has a nice cheesy flavor. So we're gonna put that in there just like that. So I think that's like, like an eighth of a cup. Um, you know, just a little bit to get that flavor going, maybe a little bit more. Tap all that out. And then see, so you got this. We're gonna mix that up just like that to make sure all of that's incorporated, the salt and all the spices and the cheese as well. Yeah, let's say a quarter cup of cheese. I'm gonna add a little bit more to it. And then our waffle iron is ready. Just wanna make sure I get the right amount of cheese here. Obviously be careful again. This is a hard cheese, so you don't wanna hurt your hands. Just like that. All right, mix that up again. And so you've got this nicely formed, like hash brown type mix. I got this waffle iron. This is uh, this one's an all clad and it's set at the three level. 
We're gonna crisp it and then just a little bit of spray. Some waffle irons recommend not using spray, some of the uh, industrial ones, so just look at your manufacturer one. And so this will probably get five of these guys. So you can, depending on the size of the waffle iron, right? So I'm just going on what I have right now. And the egg will help bind it and you can hear it sizzle so it's nice and hot and heated. You're gonna get some residual liquid, that's fine. You just, you know, let that pull to the bottom, try to pull as much off of it as possible. And I got a little bit more that can go in here. And I'll just kind of loosely put that in evenly so they cook evenly, just like that. And then we put the lid down. All right, and then we're gonna cook it. It's gonna beep when it does. And then we're gonna lower it. I just wanna show you where we're in the process. So obviously the steam's coming out, so the moisture is coming out, which do you want. Um, so it's been six minutes. So you see that? It's getting some of that crispness. So we're gonna get a little bit more crispy and then lower the heat just so it cooks through the middle. Um, and that's the, that's the main thing. So we're gonna cook it a little bit more, but you can kind of see it starting to take shape after six minutes. Okay, so here we go. This has been about 26 minutes. And so you can tell they're crispy like that. I like them like this. So I'm gonna pull these up by using, well, let's see my fingers first. Yeah, this is, looks good. So we're gonna go just like that. And let them rest and the steam will come out. But look at that. So that side I would do presentation side. Obviously you do that, but it takes a little while, but you want that crispness to form and develop, but also to, to cook on the inside. So it's a perfect combination of crispy and a little soft and chewy.